Yeah, that's why I can't find it. I use it once every two weeks. <laughs> Are we on? Well, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order and state this meeting being held in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231. It was properly noted and been hosted and certified by the clerk. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffer Camp. Here. Ms. Roberts. Here. Mr. Schindler. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Smith. Mr. Young. Here. Mayor Francis. Here. Please join me with the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'd like everyone to have a quick moment of silence for all these unfortunate people in the Middle East that are going through such terrible times. Ready to report, John? Start yes. with you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that um, next Thursday, I'm sorry, I'm get my calendar out. Next Thursday, the 26th, the Center for Prevention will be at the community center from 3 to 7. So anyone that wants to avail themselves of county resources can meet Marjorie there and she'll be able to help you if you need something from the county. Also, a few weeks ago, I had mentioned that we had partnered with the Valor Clinic to do a PTSD support group for veterans and first responders. So through the Valor program, they have um, a program called Veterans Unstoppable. And through this program, which they will be doing at the community center, um, veterans, police, fire, EMS, anyone in that field of work can get help for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, it will be held the second Wednesday of the month at the community center at 6.30. Um, I'm going to, I did make some copies because there's a website on here as well as a phone number if someone wants to donate to the Valor Clinic, that would be helpful. Also, if you know someone, a first responder or a veteran that is having trouble processing some things that they've lived through and seen, um, you can go ahead and hand out this flyer. Um, we will be posting it on, on the Hopacon Community Center page, but I did want to start reminding everyone that this will be coming to town on November 8th. So the second Wednesday of every month. So we'll be starting November 8th, and then every month there on. So I think that's it for now. Christopher, can you pass these out for me, hon? And here's some council. Please take that and get the, yeah, get the word out. Thank you. Let me pass that down. I have plenty more in my office. Thank you. Thank you. That's um, very nice. I know. Oh, oh, look at here. Yeah, we'll take it. Okay. November 8th. The second Wednesday, November 8th, is our first session. <laughs> And I should say that the people running the program are veterans and first responders that have lived it. So they're, they, they're the most relatable. They'll be with people, working with people that have walked the same stuff and gone through the same things that they've gone through. So that makes it doubly effective in my, in my view. So we're very proud to be able to introduce this. Thank you. Good, thank you. Brad, you're up? Nothing tonight. Mayor. Brad, you're up? I have uh, nothing. John, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, from Recreation, uh, their Halloween event is this Sunday at Modic Park from 12 to 3. Um, they've got numerous things, entertainment for the young people, um, and there's also a costume contest. Um, they are getting ready for Recreation basketball, sign-ups, 
uh, will be coming very soon. We're, we're doing signups or will be doing signups online and that's very soon to come. Municipal Alliance, there's a resolution for a submittal for a grant. Hopefully that's looked at favorably. Um, the Environmental Commission, out in the uh, Environmental Commission display case, out in the, in the lobby, there's a new photo of the of Hopatcon getting its Sustainable Jersey certificate for the fourth time. Uh, we are one of only two communities or municipalities in Sussex County that have achieved this four times. A um, couple of events they have coming up, the Lake of Pacon Trail, the Cowboy Creek Hike will be on Saturday, October 28th from 12.30 to 2.30. Uh, everyone should meet at Durban Avenue School. Also, November 4th, Saturday, I believe that's earlier in the morning, the Environmental Commission will be cleaning up the shoreline on Maxim Drive. That's part of the five-year drawdown and, and the Lake Pacon Foundation tags off of that to, to organize a cleanup. <clears throat> um, the town litter cleanup that was rained out twice will be rescheduled sometime next spring. From police, the food truck festival as of this afternoon, the food truck festival has not been uh, rescheduled. However, I would expect that it's going to be because the forecast for Saturday is still rain. Yeah. Um, and if you're a high school football fan, the high school home game is tomorrow. A lot of people think it's Friday, but this week it's Thursday, 7 p.m. at the high school. Their opponents are Pascack Hills and it's homecoming week. So that's always a kind of a fun thing. Um, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Good. Um, I want to remind everyone that we'll be re-dedicating uh, the park in the back of the parking lot here, which is known <coughs> as Rotary Park. The name is being uh, changed to Pack on Rotary and Remembrance Park and we will have a ceremony for that on October 28th at 11 a.m. and we'll be having cider and donuts and so forth and then you can go walk it off at John's <laughs> hike. Um, and it, you're, uh, it'll be a really beautiful, handicapped accessible park for people to wander in. There'll be uh, uh, tables, picnic tables are being redone by the Rotary um, and benches have been donated by um, the Rotary but They'll assume the availability that if people in town want to make a memorial to someone, we'll have many ways of doing that. So the paths will be, are being fixed up and there'll be uh, multiple signs throughout the park that show then and now of pictures of what Paco was and what it looks like now in certain key places. It's going to be a very lovely place to um, relax and I hope everybody can come. That's all I have. Thank you. Administrative report, Dave, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to start with um, uh, the Hopacong uh, uh, Borough Public Water System. Uh, as you know, there was, uh, there was a, another recent letter that the DEP required us to send out um, for the previous quarter. And I've re been receiving some phone calls and emails uh, uh, questioning what well serves what street. And um, I put together a, um, a summary together that I, with information from the borough engineer that that uh, explains how the system works and the underground pipes and that the the, the water from the from the wells are primarily circulated in, into the pipe system. Um, they feed our our holding tanks and then and from the holding tanks goes to uh, the the um, residences. So there, none of our wells are dedicated to any particular street. <coughs> Um, I have posted this uh, summary on the website and on the bulletin board here at Borough Hall. And on the website, there is a map of the water system that locates all the wells for people that, that um, want that information. Um, as you will recall, the, the GAC unit at Mariner's Well is complete, and um, uh, that is about to be turned online. The other previous GAC units, uh, all PFAS were removed and non-detectable three hours after the unit went online. So we expect uh, we will have the same result for Mariner as well. 
And uh, as you may recall, um, in September, the governing body authorized the purchase of uh, the three remaining GAC units for Durban 8, Squire, and Hudson. Um, the the uh, manufacturing uh, lead time for that is going to be about nine months. So I, I would anticipate that those units will arrive here at some point uh, by the end of June of 2024, and then they'll be installed. So hopefully we, we will target to be done with these quarterly notices by the uh, by the last quarter of 2024 and we'll have uh, the GAC units on all the all the active wells um, <clears throat> on water I wanted to bring to your attention that the that the uh, tax collector had received a request from a resident that routinely uh, turns the water off for the season and then turns it back on uh, our, our code has uh, fees for turning on and turning off. Um, in past practice, uh, previous staff in the collector's office had uh, basically not charged uh, residents or, or ratepayers the $85 minimum uh, fee. Uh, there was no authority to do that in the code. Um, so the issue that that uh, a resident on Woodland, on Woodland has brought to uh, me and asked uh, to, to talk to the council about is to give them some relief so that during the time that their water is turned off, they wouldn't be charged the $85 fee. If we're inclined to do that, we would have to um, introduce an ordinance and, and, uh, and adopt some amendments to the code. Um, the turn off and turn on fee currently is $30 each. If that were to become $40 each, for an example, it would make your your revenue somewhat equal because as you all know that the budget for the water utility is set with all the customers paying at least the, the minimum so for the quarter typically it's one quarter that water would be shut off uh, they would be we would be getting the revenue from them about uh, equal to the, the, the quarterly uh, minimum charge and the, the whole premise of allowing them to have the water shut off is really for a safety reason if it's if it's not being used for the winter so that there's not a, per, a pipe burst and then do damage to their to their residences so i bring that to you um i know i have been in touch with uh, your borough attorney he has agreed that currently there's no authority to allow for the waiving of that minimum uh, quarterly fee under the circumstances we would need that authority in, in the code so i bring that to you for your consideration um, and then moving to DPW, our paving program uh, has been completed. All roads in, in both phase one and phase two are complete. Our tonnage total uh, was 10,118.87 uh, uh, tons. So over four miles of road has been had were uh, milled and paved. And um, you know our, our DPW folks uh, worked very diligently. Um, uh, during that uh, the last two week period to work with the contractor. One of the things that the governing body uh, knows is that we are able to do more roads uh, because we do not have the contractor um, budget in to pay for uh, traffic control. So DPW does that traffic control. So we're able to get more roads done by not paying that, that surcharge, if you will, uh, at a premium rate uh, to our, our external contractor. And finally, um, I, w I was uh, notified by New Jersey Natural Gas of some training that they have available for first responders. I've sent that to the police chief and the fire chief um, to have their folks take part in some of that training, particularly the fire, res the fire uh, department first responders. Now that we do have some gas mains uh, on some roads in the borough, that training will come in handy. That's all I have. Thank you. Proclamation. So we had a proclamation for our fire department. I've, I've been, it's been requested that we hold off till the next meeting. The fire department's been busy with the parade, and they had to actually tonight the meeting for the, for some uh, <coughs> critique on how the parade works. So uh, rather than rather than uh, interfere with that, we'll do the proclamation uh, next meeting. I'll entertain the motion to open the meeting to the public. I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. An opportunity is given to the public for commentary. 
Comments are limited to one comment at no more, no more than five minutes. If you do comment, please do not give your address. Okay. Um, Rachel Rodriguez. My one question is, following the land use call last night, Mr. Mayor, you had recommended a special meeting be held for Richie Power. Um, um, his company name is going for me. Uh, Green Tree? Or Green, Green Tree. Green, Green Tree. Tree. Green Tree. Um, a special meeting be held for Green Tree because they waited to the last minute to come in and request an extension. So who's going to be responsible for paying the architect and the legal counsel that has to join that special meeting that night? Because we couldn't just wait as a normal applicant would for the, the next meeting. The applicant day. would be responsible. So they're paying architect fee and... We'll, we'll wait till we're done. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. So that was just a question. So we'd be paying for that. That's all. Thank you. Engineer. Mayor Bowes, um, the 2023-164, I thought we already authorized the fire truck. Mm -hmm. Are you just authorizing somebody to buy it, the award, under resolution? Okay, and 2023-165 um, is authorizing the hiring of an energy aggregation consultant, and I was wondering if you can explain that, what that entails. And um, from Councilwoman Roberts, mm -hmm. what donations would they be looking for for the Valor Clinic? If you know. Um, I think you want to wait. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one quick answer, monetary. Oh, okay, thank you. By the way, all these uh, resolutions are in the agenda, the explanation, the full explanation. But, no, we can just get the one page. More I'd have to read it in the back. More comments? Yeah. My name is Michelle Rowers. I just wanted to say thank you um, to you, Mr. Francois, for looking for creative ways to save money for our community. Um, having the DPW do the, the road assistance instead of charging those crazy. I, I think that was just so ingenious and I just wanted to give you some positive feedback. I think that's fantastic. Well, thank I, you for I, I looking at credit where credit's due to our superintendent of public works, Pat Smith. Thank you. No, but thank you guys. <laughs> More public? Yeah. One more? Yeah. <laughs> David Hi. I just want, um, okay. I just want to thank you for having another rabies clinic on the February line. <laughs> More comments? Move to bring it back. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're back. Aye. Uh, yeah, answer, answer about the fire truck. And so the on the, or for Rachel, just to complete that uh, right. uh, statement. So the, the cost for the borough engineer, the, borough, the land use board attorney, um, there are escrow accounts. So the developer would, or the applicant would have to Put an escrow account on file, mm -hmm. so their charges would be would be charged to their escrow account for cost incurred. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, for the fire truck resolution, uh, the, there was a pre previous resolution that the uh, governing body uh, supported the purchase of the fire truck. This is actually awarding the contract to the particular vendor for a particular price. Great. And the energy consultant, the state of New Jersey has a procedure where we can auction. Our, our, our purchase of electricity, and there's uh, approved vendors that are able to do that through the Board of Public Utilities. However, uh, this is authorizing a process that, that will be a competitive contract. It's a public bid process. We can't just select one vendor to do it. There has to be an open process for them to respond. So it was authorizing that process. Thank you. Okay, that was it. Approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of 10-4-2023. Uh, I'll move. Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Abstain. Ms. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Mill. Yes. Approval of the 10-6-2023 uh, minutes. I'll move them. Uh, one quick note um, on the there's a typo on the copies that we have. I know it's been corrected already, but um, Mr. Hefferkamp was marked as seconding uh, the um, um, the motion to take the vote on the, on it, and he was not here. There's two seconds. 
Otherwise, I'll move them. Call vote for Second. Second. Call vote for Mr. Hopper Camp. Abstain. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Abstain. Ms. Smith. Abstain. And Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2023-163, Bill Bliss. Does anyone need anything removed or discussed? Not hearing or seeing any mayor, I'll move the bill list in its entirety. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. And there is no consent agenda. John, for the minutes approval for the 6th, of the uh, October 6th, uh, there were three extensions. Oh, I was, here. <coughs> I was here. I thought I wasn't yes. there, but I was here. So, so I can I change it? I'm sorry. I forgot where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Went the right way to do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I can just make no votes in between and nothing else. Just stuff. So I think she can just correct her vote. I correct your vote. Okay. Thank you. So we're sorry. Vote no, just Mr. Schindler. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Resolution 2023-164, authorizing award of the Pierce Fire Truck. I'll move it. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Uh, no. Ms. Smith. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2023-165, authorizing hiring an energy aggregation consultant. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2023-165, authorizing the submittal of a grant for municipal alliance. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hopperkamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. And Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinances, there are no introductions. Final hearing, ordinance 25-2023, vacation of D Drive. An ordinance vacating D Drive right away in the Grover Pacon, uh, in Sussex, State of New Jersey. So moved. Second. I'll open that to the public for any questions or comments. Good, I have a question. There was a gentleman uh, last meeting when we introduced it, there was a gentleman that was questioning some runoff, and I was just wondering if if he was his questions been satisfied. Well, he's not here, so he he's 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 right. here. okay. Uh, my question is not satisfied because I was told that the construction department takes care of that. Construction department told me town engineer takes care of that, who hasn't taken care of anything. The town engineer has not responded to me. Um, only the, his assistant did once. I called several times and I have no response. Uh, the, uh, the applicant or the, the person requesting this vacation is represented by uh, Dan McCarthy, an attorney in town? Correct. He was uh, requested to be in touch with you about that drainage issue. Has he been in touch with you? No, only about the closing of the road, which we agreed on. Okay. They came, sorry. Right. But that uh, runoff, no. More questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All roll. Mr. Hoppercamp. Yes. Ms. Robert. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. We'll make sure someone gets back to you. I'll, I'll call the, 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 do, the, do we have your contact information? Um, I don't know. Um, you can give it to me. Give, give, give it to Dave and we'll make sure that your question gets back. Appreciate that. Okay. Yep. Ordinance 26 2023, lead based paint inspection. An ordinance to the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, amending the Borough Code to add a new chapter 145 entitled lead-based paint inspections requiring inspections of certain rental dwellings for lead-based paint hazards as mandated by PL 2021-C-182. So move it. Sorry. And I'll open that for any questions or comments. Hearing none? Okay. Okay, okay. okay go ahead. We were counting on you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. I just, uh, it seems very vague, certain. Dwellings. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, uh, 
Is it it's all it's rental it's dwellings, it's or yeah, how do you it's it's uh, it's decipher this? So this ordinance is not the borough's idea. Um, this is a statute that's been passed by the state, and the state defines which uh, dwellings have to be inspected, and it's it's in the ordinance. It's, it's uh, again, it's it's not our drafting of uh, which ones are uh, required to be inspected. It's the state's, but it's uh, it's not vague. This, the statute definition is every single family, two family, and multiple rental dwelling. So vague. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything after vague, 1978 right? date, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Built after 1978. Can I just ask, who's going to be policing that? Who polices the, to make sure that those inspections are done or it, that they... Uh, ultimately, the construction <coughs> official would have responsibility. For our town? Yes. So then they would yeah, answer the, the, the prop state. The property owner is required to submit the certifications. The borough collects them. Um, this ordinance puts in place a mechanism for uh, someone to utilize a contractor or a vendor that we would uh, have a contract with. They have to pay for the cost of it. You know, the law, the state law also allows them to hire their own certified lead inspector. They do not have to utilize someone that the borough has hired, but the borough is required to have this in place in the event that they choose to use a contractor that the borough will. And if hire. they don't, are there repercussions? If yeah, they don't they're, they're, I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but in the states, in the state law, there, there would be fines and violations and so forth. Okay, so, and no, nobody here in our town would follow up on that or? Well, the ownership yeah, would, I think it, I believe it puts the responsibility on the construction official for when uh, uh, per permits and site plans is over the zoning officer. So it'll be between the zoning officer and the construction. Okay, I have one more question. So let's say a renter, this is done, the inspection is done, the lead based inspection is done, which I think is a great idea, especially with children involved, which I think is phenomenal. Thank you. But um, they move and a new renter comes in. Does that inspection Blanket for a year? Does it blanket for six months? No, they have to do a new inspection. It's by a standard right. It's by it's by owner. It's by renter. By renter. Yeah. 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 Every time it turns over. Every time a new renter. Got to be redone. Similar to the fire. Similar to the fire code. Right. Thank you. Does the fire code work on the same model? Perfect. Thank you. And that's the so fire marshal right there for the inspection. <laughs> I tell you. All right. More questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoppercamp. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Yellen. Yes. Um, so old business. New business, I want to talk about this water shutoff issue so the council can get some direction to our administrator how to move forward with it. I think it makes sense. It's 40 mm -hmm. words. Yeah, if you if you make the shut off forty and the and the turn back on forty, it's that's your basically you're you're not losing money for that quarter, um, and they're not being charged for that quarter plus the turn on. So would it be what what if it's shut off for a year? That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, they get do they get charged one time to open one time? Right now, yeah, the code right now has the shut off and shut turn the shut off and turn on at the time the shut off and the turn. Typically, well, maybe. typically the practice is seasonal for a quarter, but yeah, to that point, there could be very well be a longer period of time. So we have a pretty good council that can address that issue. <laughs> but for when you re so, if we so redid the ordinance, you, 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 you could address you that very question. Well, if we do a one quarter limit, that's possible. But that doesn't make sense. Year. That doesn't make sense for like the lady across the street from me. It's a un, un uh, insulated house. It's a summer cabin. She comes in in May and she goes out in October. They just left. So that's more than one quarter. So it overlaps too, at least. And if she wants to come in early to open it up in whatever April, March, April. So you, you just have to remember that your your utility rate is set up very mechanically, mm -hmm. right? Your utility rate is the cost of operating the system divided by the rate payers. Mm -hmm. And if you start changing the rate payers mm -hmm. from a full year to a half year to guessing 
0.5s and 0.6s and 0.7s, you're moving that number around. Yeah, actually. And it's, it's mm -hmm. um, you know, look, if one person does it, no one's going to notice. But if, you know, if 30 people did it, so the, your rate would be off the year. So the tax collector advises that in total there's about 12 people, or 12 properties that currently do the shut off, the turn off and turn on. But to that point, I brought this to the council because the resident asked us to bring it and make sure that it got discussed. So it's really the, up to the governing body what you need. If you so want your to recommendation? Yeah. No, no, I'm not. This no. is this is this is a decision yeah. for the council to make. I'm just pointing out to you okay. that your your rate is based upon assuming that everyone that is in the denominator um, that is a rate payer is paying the full year, and if a percentage of those are not paying for the full year, <coughs> your rate moves. Yeah. Yeah. And. You know, and that's so would the rest of the people have to absorb yeah. correct yeah. the rest yeah. of the people have to absorb the difference. Right. That might get us fifty. So why don't we why don't we send it to the water committee and have them get some more information from uh, John and from our CFO about the impact and mm -hmm. we go from there and then report back. Sounds good. I mean you have time if the water committee were to determine to move forward in any direction, we could probably address it. <coughs> All right, so we'll we'll work on that. Okay. Any more new business? We have mayor's comments. <laughs> I don't have too much to say, but what I will do <coughs> is read into the record a press release. Everybody's talking about the water, so I will read into the record what I know currently about our class action lawsuit, and so. Uh, 3M Company and DuPont have agreed to resolve Forever Chemical PFOS contamination lawsuit with public water providers for more than $13 billion. The background New Jersey, the verb of on New Jersey is proud to announce that its attorneys have reached a settlement with 3M and DuPont who have collectively agreed to pay more than $13 billion to public water systems across the United States, including a PACCOM who have PF chemicals in their drinking water supply. The lawsuits allege that the companies and several other manufacturers sold PFOS-containing products when the companies knew that PFOS compounds would readily contaminate the environment and drinking water supply. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFOS, are man-made chemicals that are used to create many non-stick stain-resistant and waterproof products. These chemicals are also used in aqueous film forming foam, AFFF. AFFF is a firefighting agent used to control and extinguish Class B fuel fires at airports, military bases, and fire training centers. The Berber Pacons filed suit against 3M and DuPont and other defendants in September of 2020. The lawsuit is proceeding against the other defendants. Of the historic settlement, Douglas and London firm partner Gary Douglas says, this is only the first of many dominoes to fall in our unwavering quest to hold accountable those companies who have contributed to one of the worst environmental disasters in the history of mankind. And so a final hearing to approve the settlement is scheduled for December 14, 2023. If approved, a background could begin receiving its first settlement award in mid 2024. That's a press release from our attorneys. And so that's that's official. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to read that into the record so people have an understanding of what we've been through and it's been a it's been a, a, a pretty interesting bad life. I was deposed from 9 30 one morning till 3 30 in the afternoon about our water company and what we did, how we did it, how many people did it. And they showed me papers that I signed that my superintendent and, my, and our water contractor would make requests and I would have to approve them. And uh, they asked me all kinds of questions I didn't have the ready answers for. Not, not too different when, when we have public comments. I don't have the information in front of me, but I do the best I can to answer them. And my answer was being the responsible person, I, I'm obligated to sign work orders that improve our system and have to do with our water, our water utility. I, I have and I will, but 
They did give me a 15 minute break in that whole day, but they were pretty top five. I have to tell you that. That was, I don't know if you've ever, ever been deposed by corporate lawyers. There were six of them. Each one of them asked you questions one after the other. But, but we prevailed, and, and I'm very glad about that. Uh, there are some benefits. There are more than 6,000 more water utilities that are going to be uh, benefit as a, re as a result of this. Many, many, many of them didn't participate in the lawsuit. Uh, so that being said, uh, we will be considered a little bit differently by the judges. I've asked for, I have asked for $3 million to uh, pay for what we've already done proactively. So we didn't wait till the lawsuit got settled. We immediately started making our water better and added, and we'll continue to. So that gives you a little bit of background. It's been, it's been a tough battle that, that no one was interested in. And you know, when you get into litigation, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit tough. So that's the official law. Uh, that's the official press release that could be quoted or whatever. I have it, if you want it, you feel free. Uh, and, and, and I spent some time on the phone also with people, because when our water letters go out, uh, people will get, have a lot of questions. So I spent about a half an hour on the phone with one fellow, this evening actually, and uh, I walked him through our, our, our website. And uh, it, look, look under latest news, it gives, you, it gives you a statement on how our water system works overall, and there's also a map. But you have to take it up to about 400% to read the map. You just click zoom on your computer, really, and you can see the streets, you can see wells, you can see water tanks. And so I don't know what else we can do to help people understand that a well does not sort of, the, a municipal well does not serve your house or your neighborhood. Your water is mixed, like, you, like uh, Dave explained. So, but the interesting part is if, if the well levels go down, then you could be influenced or you could not be influenced. So it's kind of a gray area, but overall our water is mixed. It goes to the tank, you get your water from the tank. A little oversimplified, my engineer probably will go crazy, but well, pretty simple, that's how it works. Uh, the, the, the river stick well doesn't serve river sticks, it serves the system. And so the encouraging part of that is all the wells we've done today, uh, the, the results are not in from uh, Mariner that I know of. Yeah, uh, but all of our wells have zero detect PFAS. The output of that well, and it's millions of gallons, has zero detectable PFAS in it. That's very encouraging. Uh, as soon as Mariner well runs for about a week, I will sample the tanks, which delivers water to your faucet, and I will publish them results. Uh, I'm not gonna say our water system complies, because I can't. The state won't let me, because it doesn't. We still have wells that are a little bit over or whatever. So what I will say, and I will work to no end to make sure the water delivering to your faucet meets the state standards on PFAS. And so uh, that's where we want to hope that that helped a little bit. Uh, we do get a lot of questions on it. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's what I know we're doing. Hopefully what we just did help people understand how the system works. I think that's helpful. And that's about all I have. Uh, don't forget the lake cleanup, please. The Halloween party is Sunday. Uh, fall of the three. And you said it's fall of the three. Sunday is supposed Bring to be your call. That's supposed to be your call. I don't know, that's not my call. That's the Recreation Commission, but we're there to support it. I'll, I'll be there helping with whatever way I can to make it a success. But I, right now, it's not going to rain Sunday. Saturday, maybe. Saturday is supposed to rain. Sunday is supposed to be decent. Uh, with that being said, I'll agitate a motion to adjourn. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're done. <laughs> well, I could have. But because of the because of the question